On the battlefield, buying time to treat casualties is critical. The military is constantly studying ways to treat battlefield emergencies. Their innovative research is resulting in new technologies that allow rescuers to predict shock earlier and to treat it in new ways. Meet Dr. Vic Convertino, Task Area Manager for the Tactical Combat Casualty Care Research Program at the U.S. Army Institute of Surgical Research and one of the GEMS EMS Innovators of the Year. Hemorrhage is the number one cause of death on the battlefield. Shock is extremely serious because it is common. It needs to be treated rapidly and effectively, certainly in individuals who are hemorrhaging severely. It's a precursor to death. It's an indication that the body has lost its ability to compensate and it needs some help with intervention. And every episode of hypotension increases the patient's chance of dying. The research study that we've been conducting uses lower body negative pressure, a device here behind me that simulates hemorrhage and uh, the hemorrhagic shock that occurs in humans. The LBNP works by having a negative pressure being created below the waist when the, the human subject is in the chamber and that takes blood from the head and the heart and it redistributes it to the lower body and that reduction in blood volume to the head and the heart creates a physiology that looks just like hemorrhage. Using the LBNP model, Dr. Convertino and colleagues developed cutting-edge technology called the Compensatory Reserve Index or CRI. The CRI non-invasively analyzes multiple parameters of the arterial waveform and plugs them into an algorithm that can then predict which patients are decompensating, even before their vital signs begin to change. They have also studied how the Rescue Guard ITD can be used to buy time for patients in shock until the underlying cause can be treated. The U.S. Army Institute of Surgical Research chose to study the Rescue Guard because it does what we want to do with regard to treating combat casualties with severe hemorrhage and hypotension. That is, it provides increased perfusion and therefore oxygen delivery to the tissue and can extend the time, bias time, to get a casualty to a hospital alive. The Rescue Guard provides a small part of therapeutic resistance. That means that when an individual breathes into the rescue guard, there is resistance during inspiration that requires that thoracic pump, that intrathoracic pressure to be lowered even more than normal breathing, and that increases blood flow back to the heart and, and back to the brain and decreases intracranial pressure. When we have a subject in LBNP with the rescue guard, this actually helps to raise the blood pressure during this loss of central blood volume, and that maintains perfusion to the tissue, that is oxygen delivery to the tissue, which is just the opposite of the problems that we have with shock. The Rescue Guard also improves patient care off the battlefield. It is non-invasive and fast-acting. It does not dilute clotting factors and can be easily applied by all levels of providers. The Rescue Guard provides EMS and fire department communities with an easy way, non-invasive, to manage hypotension in patients, particularly those who may be going into shock. We conducted a very uh, interesting study with the San Antonio Fire Department paramedics in which we placed the Rescue Guard in the EMS setting in ground ambulances. Uh, the Rescue Guard was used on 200 hypotensive patients that we uh, defined as anybody who had a systolic blood pressure of less than 90 millimeters mercury. The results of this study were very important because it revealed that we were able to increase both systolic and diastolic blood pressure by 25 percent. The subjects felt better indicating that they had greater cerebral perfusion uh, and it was well tolerated. Shock has been described as the rude unhinging of the machinery of life, but thanks to cutting edge research and innovative technologies, critical care can begin on the battlefield 
and in the streets. 